The purpose of this video is to give users an introduction to various 3D finishing strategies included in Inventor HSM. In subsequent videos, we'll look at each strategy in more detail. Now, I've already programmed this part and even saved some custom views in the Representations folder to help us navigate through the assembly. The first strategy I'd like to show you is the most widely used 3D strategy, which is a parallel operation. Parallel produces parallel cutting passes at a given step over. These passes can be along the machine axis, or as shown here, at a given angle. The parallel strategy works best if the surfaces that are perpendicular to the cutting passes are at a constant slope. Let's take a look at the front view of this part. You'll notice as we're machining along the top face, the step over is fine. But then when we get to the wall that slopes away, one step might run along the wall and the very next step could be almost a full step over off that wall, leaving a large amount of material. In the same manner, when we get to steep faces or drastic changes in the slope, the scallop height is also going to change drastically. This is why we need multiple finishing strategies. No one strategy is going to be efficient at cutting all geometric conditions. So let's take a look at some of the other cutting strategies. But before we do that, I do want to point out one thing with the Inventor HSM high-speed machining strategies is specifically the smooth transitions between the toolpath segments. The smooth transitions that Inventor HSM produces allows your machine to run at higher speeds without abrupt changes in direction. Moving down the part, we'll visit the contour strategy. Contour, which is often called waterline, maintains a constant step down. While contour works very well for steep surfaces, when we begin looking at the top shallow areas of the model, contour becomes very inefficient. In this case, we can use a strategy called scallop. Scallop maintains a constant scallop height, and although scallop could be used to machine an entire part, it's typically used as a rest machining operation to get bits of material that are left over from previous operations. Now before we move on to the radial and spiral toolpaths, let's look at the ramp operation. Ramp is very similar to contour, with one exception. Instead of taking planar step downs as the contour toolpath does, the ramp toolpath will ramp down the surface, keeping the tool constantly engaged with the material. Continuing forward, let's visit the spiral and radial toolpaths. Spiral, as you might imagine, spirals out from the center of a circle. I like to think of it as a parallel toolpath for round parts. As I'm sure you can imagine, the radial toolpath, in a very similar fashion, radiates out from the center of a circle. These next two strategies automatically find the geometry that's suited to them. That is the horizontal and pencil strategy. The horizontal strategy automatically finds any horizontal faces and finishes them, while the pencil strategy automatically finds any internal radii or sharp corners. The last two 3D operations can become very useful. Projection allows you to take a sketch and project a toolpath based on that sketch down to the surface of the model. And in a similar fashion, the trace toolpath will trace along a selected edge. In subsequent videos, we'll discuss each 3D toolpath type in detail, as well as methods of keeping that toolpath to areas of your geometry that are ideal for the given toolpath. 